Mario Party and the Bible have a lot in common. There's betrayal, Satan's involved, and they both have a dedicated fan base. If there's something the Bible doesn't have though, it's Wario's Battle Canyon. In this new series, I want to take a look at the first in a long-running series and how it holds up to its sequels. Today we're going to be looking at Mario Party. Mario Party has a long history of love and hate, but regardless, it's widely considered one of the most successful and iconic party game series of all time. Having been going on for nearly 25 years, there's been very little room for anyone born after 1998 to be happy. My history with the series goes way back. I love Mario Party dearly and I own every single title and I've played them all to death. So why not take it back to where the grass first grew, right here on the Nintendo 64. I do own an N64 and a physical copy of the game, but for the sake of convenience and recording footage, I'm going to be playing this on the Nintendo Switch Online service. Now I'm not going to talk about the palm joystick thing, everyone's talked about it, you get the gist. They say don't use the palm of your hand to rotate the joystick or you'll get skin burns. Well I say don't be a pussy, destroy your hand. So it all starts off with the gang attempting to murder Toad. They're talking about who among them can end his life the fastest. During the discussion, Wario and Donkey Kong try to crush Luigi, and sadly Luigi died in the hospital shortly after this. So everyone's arguing about who's the superstar, and then all at once they go in for the kill when all of a sudden Toad gains the ability to float. He then tries to barter with them. Luigi's having a seizure from his head trauma while Donkey Kong and Wario just clip into each other. Mario stands tall and proud before Peach decides to eat her hands, and lastly Yoshi practices sucking dick. But, a few awkward animations later, they all agree that the best thing to do would be to sacrifice the cameraman to the great pipe. And with that, our journey begins. If you have no prior save data the first time you play, you get this 90s ass art of Mario and his crew. I love it. But let's get into the mood and turn that 16x9 into a cozy 4x3. Grab a gun and run up your will because we're playing Mario Party. So here we are on the map screen and we have all these options. We're going to play one game of Mario Party to see how well the game was designed before it could learn how to improve and if it still holds together well. But first, let's check out our options. No better option than options. There's this creepy music playing over this scary ass toad. I can erase all save data. You can use the stuff here as much as you want. Well, the only other stuff here is the sound lever and the door, so you know what? I think I'm good. Here in the minigame house, we can buy and play minigames we've unlocked. Some minigames cost more than others, and you can only buy the ones you've played before in party mode. The setup to play a single minigame is so over the top and complicated. Just let me play something. Our next stop is the mushroom shop. This funny fella here can sell us items that randomly appear in game. A bit different from how items work in future Mario parties. On the right side of the wall, there's this wanted poster for Bowser you can only see for a split second. Pretty funky. Next up is the Mushroom Bank. This is just where you can see how many coins and stars you've gathered from the boards, and you can also use the items you've bought. Everything has to be somewhere different in this game, it's weird. Lastly, we have Minigame Island. Minigame Island is awesome and it's pretty much the story mode of this game. So we're adrift in the ocean and wash up on the shore, and it's us and someone else we decide, and we're on an island filled with minigames. The events of this story are clearly based on real life events. Honestly though, I really like this a lot. There's this whole map you gotta explore, and the end goal is to beat all the minigames. Once you unlock a path to the goal, it's time to take on Toad in a game of slot car derby, and this is fucking impossible. Toad is insane, and he always does perfectly. So you have to not only not fuck up once, but still perform better than him. It's ridiculous. After a grueling amount of tries, I finally beat the fucker, and I now have access to some bonus minigames. Alright, now let's hop into things. Do I want to hear the rules? Am I a dumb bitch? No. Let's get this party started. We have some setup first. Mario Party isn't Mario Party without some friends. So I guess this isn't Mario Party. Choose some characters. I'm always Luigi. Now for the computers. I'm gonna go... Yellow Mario, Monkey, and uh, Girl. They're all hard, of course. Now for the map. I like that all the maps are based off a playable character. Mario's Rainbow Castle. Peach's Birthday Cake. Yoshi's Tropical Island. DK's Jungle Adventure. Wario's Battle Canyon. Luigi's, uh, engine room. Yeah. The maps are rated by difficulty using this star system. You've got one and two star maps, and it goes all the way up to three stars for Luigi's famous engine room. Well, maybe in the future when these videos have a bigger time and hard drive space budget on my end, we'll come back and try them all out. But for now, let's keep it classic with some DK. Now, I firmly believe that a full game of Mario Party is 50 turns. If you're not playing 50 turns, you're not having a complete Mario Party experience. But for the sake of this video, I'm going to do 20 turns because I literally don't have the hard drive space to do 50 turns. As any game of Mario Party starts, roll the dice block and see who goes first. I go first. The others can go fuck themselves. So, me, DK, Wario, and Peach. This should be good. We got the first star location, and we're moving. As far as in-game settings go, you can mess with the tech speed, whether or not the minigame explanations show, and how many computers versus players there are. 
You can also change whether the game saves or not. I don't know why it defaults to not save ever, but I always set it to save after every round because you never know. But it makes me set it again to save after every round after every single game. It's a pain in the ass. Starting off with a 2, and great start. Donkey Kong gets the same thing because he's a fucking idiot. So everyone on the board whose turn it currently is shows up on the board as these little pegs, and it's as if someone took their head and shoved it on a pike. They look goofy, so I'm into it. Starting off strong with a 2v2 minigame. So I don't think I'm alone in saying Hand Car Havoc is one of the dumbest fucking minigames. Spam A and tilt left or right so you don't fall off. There's no practice in this game, so I guess all of us snowflakes are gonna have to grow a pair of nuts. God, this sucks. I think we're all capable of mashing a button when we have to do it for only 10 seconds, but this is the whole minigame. It's sending like shocks throughout my body. It's awful. Me and DK made it to the end and we set a record. Well, for my first time playing, it's pretty impressive that I set a new record, huh? We win 10 coins, but Peach and Wario lose 10 coins. Now that's fucked. That's some salt in the wound type shit. Back in round two, I'm the first on the map to make it to this womp here who's being a little dick and blocking the path. Well, the star's not that way, so forget about it. Toad's on the other side of the board, so eat shit. Yes is 10 coins and nope is free. Really? Nope is free? Why does it say free next to nope? That's just an option, no shit it's free. Making my way up, I stop on a happening space. I just knew it was gonna be some garbage like this. So there goes all my progress towards the star. I'm farther than I was when the game started. We're all just making our way up, but just to waste some time, Peach lands on a one player mini game, which is just so much fun for the player who gets to watch the AI act like a derp. There's coins in a green shell, you gotta remember which one. Oh, I hope she doesn't pick the green one. Oh, oh fuck. After Peach finishes enriching our lives, we're reminded that our controllers are still plugged in. It's now time for a shot at some coins. Platform Peril. This is where early Mario Party physics grab you by the dick and twist it. It's got what I can only describe as Mario Bros arcade physics in 3D. You have no control over your momentum in the air, but honestly the crummy physics kind of make it more intense. I have no clue why, but Peach won. I want to take this moment to look at these character portraits here. Luigi and Wario look fine, sure, but Peach looks a bit weird. And Donkey Kong looks like they just brought an actual ape into the studio and tried to get it to look at the camera. Like they just couldn't get him to look, he just kept looking at something in the background. Alright, I'm ready to get back into this, give me something good- FUCKING! For fuck's sake! First Bowser of the game and I want to die. Spinning the wheel and... Bowser's chance time. So this is just like a regular chance base that you can land on in this game. Except here the person getting something is always Bowser. Without second thought, I just fuck over Donkey Kong. I mean the poor bastard doesn't even have enough coins in the first place. What a pathetic moment. And then right after, he lands on the same happening space I did and screws his chances for the star. I mean it's just sad at this point, he's got like nothing going for him. Finishing up the round, Peach passes on the starting space, and every time you pass the start, you get 10 coins. So there is some kind of good thing to getting dicked by that boulder. Our minigame this time around is Desert Dash. This has got to be one of the dumbest fucking minigames of all time. Push left or right when it says to. Why are we skiing in a desert? Why are there two people on one set of skis? This is fucking stupid. There's these two thwomps in the way, but the penalty you get for being squashed by them is shorter than it is to wait for them to rise up. So it makes no sense at all to not just keep moving the whole time. What a fucking awful minigame. Alright, I can't catch a break. I'm going nowhere. DK, after being at rock bottom, manages to salvage three coins. Wario gets to this door here and he hears a voice. So the thing here is that you can't take the path that the gate is blocking unless you have 20 coins. If you don't have 20 coins, then you get laughed at, you broke loser. Another round survived and this time we get to play slot car derby. I have PTSD from this minigame. It's so ass and the controls suck. The joystick is way too sensitive to go slowly around the turns when you have barely enough time to comprehend what the fuck is going on. After three laps, it was so goddamn close, but Peach just has to be an asshole and pull through at the last second. She can rot in hell. I like how her heads are just glued to the top of some slot cars, and that's how we get represented. It's silly. I'm never leaving this area. Everyone's teasing me, getting coins, and then Peach just has to be a bitch and fucking steal from me. Like, what the fuck? Go to fucking hell. Running of the bulb is our next circle of hell, and our job here looks like we have to safely carry a light bulb to the end door. Well, this is a bit odd. I thought this was a four-player minigame, not a 1v3. So Donkey Kong has the bulb, so I guess I want to catch him, right? Well, he's not dropping it. Oh, okay, I get it now. So we want the booze to touch DK, so he drops it. Then someone else can pick it up, but we don't want him to get too close to the big door up front. Some quick maneuvering later, I managed to pick up the bulb and... We all win? So this whole time, we were all a team just trying to get the bulb to the end so we could all benefit? That's some stupid shit. Why would our common enemy be the booze and not each other? If the booze don't get us, they don't lose anything. Fuck that, dumb minigame. Finally, my first good roll since the game started. Give me my 10 coins and I'm on my way. So this is my first time getting to the womp where the path he's blocking is actually where I need to go to. So I pay the troll toll to get in this boy's hole and things ain't looking half bad. Everyone coughs it up and it's now minigame time. 
Bullover. This one's pretty well known. I love that we have our head just glued to the side of a bowling pin. The advice says that if the shell hits the sides, there's an electric shock and the game ends. Does Donkey Kong get shocked? What do you mean there is an electric shock? So he throws it, and Wario eats shit. Then Donkey Kong gives the camera this terrifying bloodshot stare. There's not even a sound effect from him. Wario loses five coins. I'm looking alright, but poor fucking Donkey Kong can't have it his way for more than five seconds. Bowser's tug of war. Well, this is the most famous minigame to have caused the skin burn, so they don't want you to do the rotating thing with your palm. But I'm no bitch. DK's head is grossly enlarged, and in about seven seconds, he's dead. Finish! Okay. So after finally scraping together a few coins, Donkey Kong just got fucked. Peach made it to the star, and I'm starting to feel disgusted. I can't stand her. In every game in Mario Party, there's always a CPU that you have beef with. The next star is right at the beginning. But boy, I'm glad I got out of there after three rounds. I would have hated to get that star. In an attempt to balance things out, the gods have given Peach a poison mushroom so she can't move next round. Good, she can fuck herself. This is being added to my list of dumbest minigames designed by dipshits. Drop the treasure chest in the pipe so it falls on you. Well, this is completely luck because I have no clue who the one dropping it is. Because it's not me. Even if it was, I can't compute which pipe I'm under fast enough. You might as well shoot the sky three times, and whoever's not dead when the bullets come down wins. Peach wins. Wow, what a fucking surprise. Fucking asshole. Her time of glee is over though, because I got a mushroom, re-roll, and bam. Use the boo to steal her star. She can rot in hell. While I'm riding high, Donkey Kong gets bouldered, but this time it actually helps him. Gets him closer to the star. He can't afford it though. Eat shit, Peach. Treasure Divers is pretty fun. So basically, you just spam A to swim, and you want to grab the treasure chest chest and bring it up without getting hit. The bigger the chest, the bigger the coinage. Wario's hit sound effect is so funny to me. It sounds like he's headed towards a cliff and he's in a really fast car that's driving away from you. Doing good. Oh look, Donkey Kong got 10 coin- oh. No, Wario's getting closer. Bobsled run. This version is usually agreed to be worse than its Mario Party 2 counterpart for its notable lack of penguin assholes. I think this one's pretty fun, but once you get far enough ahead, there's nothing the other team can do to take the lead back. So after the first 15 seconds, it just becomes a game of don't fall off. There's speed boosts, but they're really hard to miss, so there's really no point. I win, no contest. So the round starts with some drama when I land on a happening space and nothing happens. Very, very happening. DK just gets slap in the face after slap in the face after door in the ass. Then goddamn Wario gets a star. And just to keep us glued to our screen, Peach gets a one-player minigame. This is so stupid. You can see which ones have spikes and which ones are flat. How fucking stupid is she? I know that if you were playing on a CRT, maybe you couldn't tell, but this is a waste of time either way. Now for the real deal, and this looks familiar. This is just treasure divers, but someone brings the other person up faster. Okay? Well, Peach grabs the chest before DK, so we're off to a great start. Watching the AI struggle to exist is torture. After a grueling battle, we were shorted by one coin. Tragic. Well, well, well. Looks like I just barely have enough coins, and you know what that means. Looks like I'm back on top. God damn it, you asshole. New spot next to DK. Buried treasure. This one tricks you into having fun when you actually shouldn't be. It's complete luck. I have no problem with a good luck minigame, but don't try to trick me into thinking there's some kind of skill involved. There's not. Just dig for the treasure, first to find it wins. It could be in the dead center or right next to you at the start. No one knows. You can uncover these arrows that point you in the direction of it, but that'll never help you because if you're at the arrow, that means you're not by the treasure. So unless everyone else is behind the arrow you uncover, there's no shot that somebody else won't beat you. In an unexpected turn of events, DK has just received received his first star. He's gone from rags to riches, and his reaction can only show a fraction of the hysterical joy he's feeling. 1v3, here we go. Bashy Cash is another Bowser body minigame. There's really no benefit to being the one, because all you can do is lose coins. After struggling to get anything, I got nothing because Wario's a prick. Alright, let's make this interesting. So DK has landed on a chance space here, and anything could happen in chance time. DK... Me... Oh god. Swap coins. Is that good? Or bad? I lost six coins. That was probably the least interesting thing that could possibly happen in this chance time. So I gotta win this next minigame so I can have enough coins to get the star. Oh god, I suck at this one. Castaways, I just can't do it. The timing, the joystick flicking, it's too much. I'm struggling and struggling and struggling and finally... I got a chest. I don't know how much is in it though, so I'm freaking out. Maybe that was 10 coins? I don't know. Oh my god. I got a money bag, thank fuck. Can I get more? No, please be enough. Please be enough. Oh, I was good. I was good that whole time. I was good with the one treasure chest. Now I just gotta roll a five or higher and... Yes! 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 Now I just gotta... <gasps> no! No! 
Are you fucking kidding me? The fucking want piece of shit is blocking the path and I need to pay him 10 coins. Fuck me. Awesome. Terrific. Congratulations, you fat fuck. Hope it's nice. The star is right where I would have been heading to. Mm-hmm. Cool. I'm starting to be full of hate. I'm beginning to want to kill someone. I don't give a shit what anyone says. This minigame is garbage, and there's never been a scenario in the history of time where this minigame was in any way interesting. Like, awesome. This, this is great. The star is right behind me. Put me out of my misery. Splendid. I'm far beyond the point of rage. I'm just dying now. Peach is the first to pass Bowser on the board, and her punishment is buying a gold statue for 10 coins. Wow, how awful. Piranha's Pursuit is another one where your only chance of winning is the other team fucking up. How in the holy mother of fuck has it only been 15 rounds? I feel like I've been doing this forever. The standings are as follows. Me, Peach, Wario, and DK. Koopa thinks that Wario is gonna win. Now that we're nearing the end, all the red and blue spaces are worth double, and passing the starting spot nets you 20 coins now. Shit's getting real. There's only so much you can do in one round, so it's time to put the Capri Suns down and start playing like men. Everyone's picking up their dough. Wario nabs another star. Oh boy. Now the star is at the other side of the map. This is it. Now everyone has the next five rounds to make it there before the game ends. The intensity just keeps dialing up. Wario gives Peach 10 coins. Again, one of the least interesting outcomes to waste our time on. Now with this trash again, it looks like there's a vast limbo inside Donkey Kong and his eyes are the only things in it. Speaking of limbo, limbo. Basically, you just want to jump along and keep your head up. Oh, oh. Well, everyone's doing their thing, and now we got keep away. This is another everyone wins or everyone loses minigame. It's so stupid. All this just to unveil the glorious treasure JPEG. Final three turns, and we're all just trying to make our way to the star, and... Oh no... God, no. Please, no. From first to fourth. You know, I felt bad for this guy at the beginning when he just kept falling on his ass and taking hits. But now he's just turned into such a dick. Like, what the hell? Musical mushroom. Music plays. When it stops, jump up to get the treasure chest. Peach jumps perfectly. She wins. Fuck her. I'm starting to get scared because up until this point, I felt pretty confident about getting the minigame star after this. But I think Peach might have it. So my only hope now is to make it to the boo before the game ends and steal her star. Skateboard scamper. So here you want to spam B to skate and then jump with A. There's some thwomps you have to jump over, but you can also jump to reach some cash. Not me though. At the end, we're all neck and neck, but of course, money bags over here was ahead of all of us. Clearly. Last round. Here we go. So I need a 10 to make it to Boo, or a 7 to make it to the mushroom. So I have a 20% chance of rolling something that could get me there, or might, and then a 50% chance inside that 20% chance of rolling a mushroom. Then an 80% chance of rolling a number that's higher than a 2 after that. I think. Well, no. It was fun while it lasted, and guess who gets the star? Fucking DK. What an embarrassing game. And of course he wouldn't have gone full evil without stealing some coins too. Last mini game. Here we go. Balloon burst. Alternate between trigger and A to pump up the Bowser balloon, and I already lost. I hate this. Of course shithead has to win. In the end, against all odds, Donkey Kong finishes with the most stars, and Peach has the most coins. Mini game star goes to Peach. Wow. And so does the coin star. And the happening star goes to... Oh, me. And in the end, the super star star is... Peach. Luigi is so devastated that upon hearing the news, all the bones in his body melt simultaneously. After finishing the game, first place gets to use the stars to unlock a treasure chest containing the golden bananas with a floating shadow. And ironically, Wario finishes in fourth, despite the blessings of Koopa. Overall, I wish I was dead. My coins and stars get transferred over to the bank for use at the shop, but the computers get to keep theirs. Overall, Mario Party is something that was here before some of us, and will be here long after all of us. To compare one Mario Party to another is a waste of time. If you like a certain Mario Party for a particular reason, then just play that Mario Party. They all have their little things about them, and even all the way to the beginning, there is fun to be had. The maps here, well, some of them aren't the best, but some are good fun. There's two unlockable maps. One can be purchased at the shop, and the other is unlocked when collecting 100 stars. Playing just the minigames with friends here is a little tedious and slow, but I think you'll always just have more fun playing on the board anyway. There's a lot more that could be said here, but I'm gonna leave it here. If you want to have a good time, the start ain't a terrible place to begin. This game may be lacking some of its sequels, features, and quality of life improvements, but it still holds up. Someday in the future, I'll come back to this and we'll look at it inside out. But until then, as always, thank you for watching.